In this video, you're gonna learn all about my digital sculpting workflow to create a cool, vibrant character like this. I'll divide the video into three important chapters. Chapter one, my process before sculpting. Chapter two, my sculpting workflow. And finally, chapter three, icing on the cake with some grease pencil animation and camera shake. My process before sculpting is summed up to three parts. Inspiration. Idea, then planning and preparation. Inspiration is the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something, especially something creative. To get inspired, I like to start my day with some music, I make myself some coffee, and I consume content by watching YouTube and otherwise. This helps me get motivated to start something new. The idea doesn't have to be complicated. A simple idea such as showing my sculpting workflow by sculpting a cool girl with some grease pencil animation at the end is what started this video. Not revolutionary, I know. And that's okay. Look. Don't overthink things. Just sculpt whatever comes to mind. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece. Otherwise, you'll never get started. What brings an idea to life is planning before execution. I'll hop onto Pinterest, type a well thought out search phrase. Uh, whoops, <laughs> let's try this again. Then I'll try to get inspired. I'll then create a mood board to help visualize the character I'll sculpt. I personally like to use Pure Ref to create my mood board. Easy to drag and drop images from any website, different ways to organize your references, you can even add notes, crop images, you can even draw and do much more. My program of choice for this sculpt will be Blender, a free 3D modeling program that has very powerful sculpting capabilities. With my 24 inch tablet display, we can get started. Blocking out your character is one of the best ways to start your sculpt. The idea is to have big simple shapes representing the main forms of the subject. I personally like to start with a sphere to sculpt anything organic. It's a great primitive form to start with. I'll go ahead and form an oval-like shape for the head and slightly indicate the jawline. I will then duplicate the head and move it downwards for the neck. Using what you have instead of starting with a new sphere every time will speed up your workflow. I'll repeat the process to add her clothes, starting with the top part, then the torso. I'll be using mainly the grab brush to create my blackouts. Remember, we want the shapes to be as simple as possible, but still represent the overall forms. I'll duplicate this to create her sleeves, use symmetrize to add symmetry, then I'll continue to form her clothes. I'll sculpt her directly in a three-quarter pose for something more dynamic. With that in mind, I'll rotate everything in the z-axis, then rotate her head again to look towards us. I'll now duplicate her head to start blocking out her hair. I am doing this concept as I go, but having many references can be extremely helpful when doing this. I already knew I wanted her hair to be short, so I'll be experimenting with that idea. It's time to start sculpting her face, adding all the main face features. I'll start by carving her eye socket, then I'll pull out her nose and work it a little bit. I'll go ahead and add a sphere for her eyes, rotate it, place it in her eye socket, I'll mirror it, then adjust the size and placement. I'll now sculpt the upper eyelids over the eyes, refine the head a bit, then sculpt the lips separating the upper and lower one. I'll continue to refine the head until I get something decent. The hair blockout that I did will serve as the main volume and shape. It will also serve as a guide to the direction of the hair strands that I'll be adding. I'll duplicate the base of the hair, then place it in front to start sculpting her hair strands. It's best to first lower the poly count with remesh to make it easier to modify the shapes. I'll now duplicate the hair strand to place it in a new spot, then sculpt it a bit. I'll continue this process of duplicating, placing, and modifying big hair strands till she has an overall nice shape. Most of the hair strands will have the same flow, but a few will have a different direction to create some chaos, which will add some personality. Nice. I'll smooth the lips, crease the separation here, then work the volume of the upper parts. I'll push the upper outline of the lip to create a ridge, then I'll add volume to the lower lip, carve underneath here, sculpt the filtrum, then go over the nose a little bit. I'll now sculpt the upper eyelids, creating the upper crease and refining the overall form of the eyes. I'll now add a vertex, extrude it, then continue extruding it to model her eyebrows over her bras with the snap tool on. I'll add a few modifiers to mirror it, subdivide it, make sure it sticks to the head, add thickness and smooth it. I'll also add an edge loop to sharpen this part. I'll grab the paintbrush, then color her face, neck, her whole sweater, her hair including all the hair strands, then finally her eyebrows. I'll pick a pinkish color and paint her lips. I'll also paint some reds on her cheeks, then I'll paint her some makeup for her upper eyelashes, darkening her upper eyelids. I'll now rotate her eyes towards us, then I'll paint them deep ocean blue. I'll model her eyelashes by extruding vertices over her eyelids, I'll extrude them away, and then I'll place them. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for her lower eyelashes. 
I decided to give her a hoodie, so I'll duplicate this, then use the grab brush to move it around and get the shape I'm looking for. A nice big hood that will complement her cool look. I'll also get rid of this, and then I'll refine the hoodie, smooth things, sculpt some folds, add some seams, then more folds, refining the whole sweatshirt. Nice. I wanted to add lights early on to better visualize the concept I'm going for. So I'm gonna switch to material view and add the material with the color attribute node to show her painted colors. I'll make her eyes glossy, then I'll add a sunlight coming from the top and another one for a rim light on this side. I'll make this one blue and bright. I'll now duplicate it and move it to the other side. In Blender, you can draw in the 3D space with something called the grease pencil. I wanted to incorporate that into my sculpt in the most awesome way ever. Here I'll start using it to draw on her eyes, creating that black, dark border around the iris. I'll also draw her pupils over her eyes. I decided to make her eyes a vibrant pink for the final concept, so here I'll paint them with a saturated pink color, then do the same for the bottom part of her hair strands. I'll adjust the lighting, duplicate this rim light, rotate it to come from underneath, and make it a vibrant pink light to complement her new vibrant look and the blue rim lights. Trust the process. I'll go back to the grease pencil to sketch her eyelashes. Then I'll draw some sketch lines around the nostrils, in between the lips, on the lip, under the lip, on the eyes again, here, here, there, and everywhere, even on the sweater. I'll continue to sketch on the sculpture all around till satisfied. I wanted to add a background element, so I'll use the grease pencil to sketch some dark blue lines behind her. I'll scale the width to get the lines closer to each other, then I'll paint the bottom parts pink and the top parts bright teal. I'll continue to refine and adjust it a bit. I'll get back to using the grease pencil to sketch some hair strands all over her hair. I'm gonna continue doing that till I have a bunch of them, then I'm gonna paint some of these sketches as if they were affected by the blue and pink rim whites. I'll now use the grease pencil to draw some shadows. I'll add some around her eyes, under her nose, on her sweatshirt around the folds and creases, under her bras, nostrils, lips, and a bit all around. I'll finish the sculpt with some highlights using the grease pencil to paint over her hair, the hoodie, the different parts of the face, and of course, the eyes. I'll continue refining the highlights all over till she is complete. I'll get back the background and there she is, in all of her vibrance, mystery, and coolness. The perfectly imperfect girl, the cool girl. Now this is a sculpt that deserves a bit more, which takes us to the final chapter. I gotta feed my three cats, especially this one. She runs through her food like I own the bank or something. Anyways, if you're interested in sculpting, you are in luck. I got a bunch of courses that teach just that. But today, I wanna talk about one of my favorites, Master Sculpting Heads, one of my ultimate sculpting courses. This thing is packed with content. If you struggle with sculpting heads, you have to check it out. It has a basic and an ultimate version. The basic version has over six hours of content. It will help you improve your understanding of the skull, head proportions, shapes, and anatomy. You'll get tips on how to sculpt the head, you'll also learn the differences between male and female heads, and of course, you will get real-time sculpting tutorials with 3D references provided. The ultimate version is even more impressive. It has all the basic content with an extra 15 hours of content, currently making it a 21-hour course. You also get any future updates on the course for free if you have the ultimate version. With the ultimate, you will get extra tutorials and exercises sculpting face features, stylized characters, and more. I'll add a link to my courses in the description of this video. And now for the final chapter, the icing on the cake, the grease pencil animation and camera shake. To add a little nice touch to the sculpt, I'll animate everything I created with the grease pencil animation by adding a noise modifier. This will add life to the sculpt. I'll then add some camera shake as if someone is holding the camera when filming her. This can easily be done by adding some noise to the X, Y, and Z positions of the camera. Remember, this is how it started, this is how it went, and this is how it ended. Trust the process.